Hello and welcome to Mickeyology. I'm Austin Rathall, amateur historian and lifelong Disney devotee, and I'm here today to talk to you about the history behind some of your favorite Disney movies. To combine my love of Disney with my love of history, I am setting out to research each historically based Disney film and trying to pinpoint when and where each of those films take place. As I do my research, I will present my findings to you via the channel. The idea of studying the history behind Disney movies might seem kind of baffling at first. I mean, after all, these are movies meant for entertainment, they're usually meant for children, and the filmmakers don't often have a specific time or place in mind when they make the film. A lot of Disney movies are sort of set in a generic time and place, like medieval Europe or ancient Greece. So why study the history behind Disney movies? Isn't that taking the movies too seriously? Isn't that kind of a fruitless endeavor? I would say that there are actually two good reasons to study the history behind Disney movies. Reason number one. I, as a Disney fan, think that it would be very fun to have a timeline slash map of all the Disney films in the Disney canon. I think it would be just interesting to know about where and when each of the movies takes place, which movies overlap with other movies in the timeline, that kind of thing. The second reason is because I think that learning is fun. And when you study the history behind a movie, any movie, you tend to learn things about that time and place that you wouldn't normally learn. So, while studying the history behind the Disney movie Brave may not teach you all of the important events in the history of Scotland, it will teach you things about Scottish clothing, architecture, and folklore that you would normally miss if you were just studying the generic history of Scotland. Now that we've established why it's a good idea, to study the history behind Disney movies, let's talk about how. Determining the time and place in which a Disney movie is set can be very difficult. Think about it this way. When a historian wants to discover when a certain document or artifact dates to or comes from, he or she can analyze that document or artifact for clues, and anything in the artifact or document goes. They can analyze the word choice of the document, the language it was written in. They can analyze the features of the artifact and compare it with other artifacts from different times and places. We can't do that with Disney movies. Disney movies are modern fictional entertainment. And even though a lot of what you see in certain films comes from history, most of it always comes from the filmmakers' imaginations. For example, both Pocahontas and John Smith were real people, but they did not fall in love like they do in the Disney movie, Pocahontas. In other words, Disney movies contain a lot of anachronisms. Anachronism, an error in chronology, especially a chronological misplacing of persons, events, objects, or customs in regard to each other. A person or a thing that is chronologically out of place. Now that's not to say that having anachronisms in a movie makes it bad. As a matter of fact, a lot of filmmakers put anachronisms into their films on purpose. For example, think about The Emperor's New Groove. In that movie, we clearly see Yzma and Kronk riding an indoor roller coaster inside Cusco's palace, while outside the palace, Pacha and the villagers are still using wooden carts and llamas to get around. Why did filmmakers choose to show such different levels of technology in the same movie? Well, they did it because it's funny to see Kronk on a roller coaster. 
and likewise we the audience who go to see the movie are there to laugh and to be entertained and not to see an ancient civilization depicted with 100% accuracy. On the other hand, Disney movies are not completely anachronistic. Disney filmmakers often do some really intense research to prepare for making their films and they often hire historical consultants to make sure that they get their world or the event or era that they're depicting correct. So with these two realities in mind, is it possible to pinpoint the historical settings of a Disney film? And if so, how can you do it? To find out when and where these Disney movies take place, I'm going to do something that might seem counterintuitive at first. I'm going to look at these movies almost as if they were true stories and look for all the clues that could indicate when and where each of the movies is set. However, treating these movies exactly like historical documents and taking them at face value could be problematic. As I said before, these movies are entertainment, they're not historical documents, and so if I take them all at face value, that could lead me to reach some pretty wild and inaccurate conclusions. Likewise, you, the viewer, are going to need some way to know that my findings are accurate, especially since I'm an amateur historian, not a professional doctor of history. So, here are five rules that I'm going to set for myself so that I can analyze these movies to the best of my ability, get accurate conclusions, and so that you, the viewer, can know what is coming from this channel and what to expect going forward. Rule number one. Whenever possible, I must treat the movie as if it were a historical document, which means I will be searching the movie for clues about when and where it takes place, and pretty much anything goes. Art, dialogue, wardrobe, anything that evokes a certain time and place in history that's found in the movie can serve as a clue to when and where it takes place. Granted, a lot of the times filmmakers don't care to put their movies in a specific time period. They don't often have a specific setting in mind when they're making a movie, so some of this might be kind of subjective. On the other hand, I have found that filmmakers often put so much work and so much energy and research into getting the sort of historical flavor of their movie right, that when you go to analyze the movie historically, you find that the movie actually fits very nicely into pretty a pretty specific historical time period. Rule number two, I will ignore anachronisms, especially deliberate ones. Anachronisms can be found in all historical movies, doesn't matter how well made they are, how hard the filmmakers work, anachronisms simply happen because we're making stories about the past in modern times. And focusing on anachronisms in Disney movies would distract me from the central purpose of this channel, which is to determine the historical settings of Disney films. So this isn't going to be a gotcha series, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time pointing out filmmakers' mistakes, especially because, as I said earlier, a lot of times filmmakers insert anachronisms to their movies on purpose, because it makes them more entertaining. Another reason to ignore anachronisms is because taking them at face value could really mess with my conclusions about a movie. For example, take the animated version of Mulan. Clearly, this is a movie that takes place in China. The characters talk about how they live in China, they write in Chinese characters, there's Chinese architecture. There's no doubt that that's where the movie takes place. And yet, when I watch the movie, I hear dialogue being spoken in English. That's an anachronism. If I were to take that at face value, then that would lead me into all sorts of logical problems. I might be thinking, well, does this mean that Mulan takes place in some far-off future or some distant past where all the people in China are speaking English but they're writing in Chinese characters? Is Mulan somehow showing me an alternate dimension where Chinese history didn't play out the same and they all spoke English? No, I don't think that approach works. A much simpler explanation would be that the filmmakers chose to put their movie about ancient China in English to appeal to an English-speaking audience. So, when I see anachronisms, whenever possible, I am going to conscientiously and deliberately ignore them. Rule number three. I must research using credible sources. 
I don't want to waste anybody's time by simply spreading rumors or my own impressions of when movies take place. Instead, I want to share only factual information. So I will, to the best of my ability, share information only from the most reliable sources that I can find. These are going to include things like comments from the filmmakers themselves about the movie, things like nonfiction books, credible websites, and every now and then uh, something from an academic journal. However, I know that it is not enough to simply study those things for myself because you want to know where I got my information. And for that reason, we have rule number four. Rule number four is I must cite all of my sources. To make sure that you know where I got my information, that I'm not just sharing things off the top of my head, I will cite all of my sources somewhere on screen whenever I am sharing information from a source. That way, if you think there's a problem with any of my sources, or if you think you have a better one than the one I used, then you can let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to learn more about a topic that we're covering, then you can follow my citations and study the source for yourself. Rule number five. I will place each Disney movie in an approximate time and place. This is what this channel is all about. So at the end of each of my investigations, I will share with you my conclusions about when and where each individual movie took place. Now, some movies will be easier to trace than others. However, I will always do my best to leave you with a better idea of when and where the movie takes place than you had before you tuned into my video. So, if you are interested in Disney, if you're interested in history, if you're interested in Disney and history, then please follow along with this channel as I do some detective slash Disney work and try to uncover the time and place of some of my favorite movies. Hopefully you will enjoy your time here, you will learn a little bit more about your favorite movies, and you'll uncover some of the historical Easter eggs that are lurking in some of Disney's movies. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.